meeting to order. I'd like to announce that this meeting is being recorded. In accordance with 940 CMR 29.10, <coughs> remote participation adopted by the Greater Lowell Technical School Committee April 17, 2014. Committeeman O'Hare and Committeeman Matt Sheehan will be participating at tonight's meeting remotely. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. O'Hare? Here. Here. Mr. LeMay? Here. Mr. Sheehan? Here. Mr. Gitcher? Here. Mr. Bahu. <coughs> Mr. Tatsius? Here. Mr. Morin? Here. Mr. Gigi? Here. Committeeman Morin, is there anybody from the public that signed up to speak tonight? No, Mr. Chairman. On to school communications, if we have any. Do we have any? Ah, uh, the report of the student representative. You're up. Uh -huh. Thank you. Greater Lowell once again participated in the City of Lights Parade in downtown Lowell on November 27, 2021. This year, the citywide theme was Candy Cane Lane. Our technical students, under the direction of float advisor Mr. Couliard, brought the theme to life with their rendition of Mount Griffin Ski Lodge. The float won the Mayor's Award for Best Float and marks the fourth consecutive year Greater Lowell has been recognized by the city for their outstanding entries. Skills USA had a successful November with a general membership workshop and pizza party attended by 62 members and our officers attending the Fall State Leadership Conference for Workplace Readiness. Schoolwide technical competitions will take place from December 16th to the 21st using our virtual platform and to celebrate the start of competitions, our officers will be hosting an after school social activity featuring winter and holiday arts and crafts. In January, Skills will once again be conducting their community outreach challenge held in conjunction with Open House. This year, the focus will be on the essential element of teamwork, with members emphasizing the interdependence of shops in the working world. The National Technical Honor Society, National Honor Society inducted 57 new members in early November. They now have a total group of 83 students, our largest membership ever. Over the last few weeks, they have been collecting food for our own Griffin Food Pantry. They are also planning to collect gently used children's coats for donation to Anton's Cleaners through the rest of December. In addition, Senior Abby Jingris was named as Greater Lowell's recipient of the Daughters of the American Revolution's Good Citizen Award. As part of this award, Abby submitted an essay for their selection committee's consideration for the DAR scholarship. Our peer tutors have been actively involved in the After School Homework Assistance and Tutoring Center here at Greater Lowell. Currently, they have 12 students who will volunteer one day each week to help peers with academics and projects. The peer tutors are excited about the friendships and connections they are making with others. Their goal for the new year is to continue to add more peer tutors and build on the great success they have accomplished so far. The Music Club has had another great month of music making. There is a consistent group of members who attend weekly, as well as many newcomers who continue to join in the fun. Many are excited and nervous about their upcoming holiday show. They have singers, guitarists, ukulele players, drummers, pianists, and more. The group is extremely eclectic, and yet they are all super supportive of each other and their own musical endeavors. They are coming together as a wonderful music club family, and it makes the advisor's heart sing. The freshman and sophomore committees worked collaboratively this past month on their fundraiser, fundraiser featuring butter braid breads and joyful traditions cake rolls. This fundraiser was a success with our groups, raising over $2,000 to offset costs for the future after school field trips and events. The students also participated in other events like making posters for the school spirit pep rally. Their next goal is to develop a proposal from the freshman sophomore February dance. The Peer Mentoring Club continues to be in full swing. They have paired freshman mentees with their upper class mentors and they have begun making initial contact. Their activities in the coming months will include setting goals, setting motivated, healthy eating, and self-care. In our Guided and Bible Club, 
Members have shared what they are most grateful for through readings from the Bible and Scripture. They are learning that each day is a gift, especially during this time of uncertainty. The junior class is planning their next activity, which is a community service project called Be My Valentine. Our juniors will be creating a video for local senior citizens that will include music and songs from the 50s and 60s. The video will be digitized and sent out to the local nursing homes, senior centers, and assisted living communities. Our yearbook club has completed the cover design for the 2022 Greater Lowell Yearbook, which will be submitted for approval and paint printing. The cover was designed collaboratively by the yearbook committee and includes our core values of reach. In addition, yearbook is working with the design and visual communication students to take candid photos in the technical areas for the shop pages. And from the athletic department, the winter season opened up on November 29th with over 500 students trying out for one of our various programs. Boys basketball opened the winter game schedule with a non-league win over Somerville High School on December 10th. The team has upcoming games on December 17th at Greater New Bedford and in the Greater Lawrence Holiday Tournament on the 28th and 29th. Girls basketball dropped a tough four-point game in their opener against league foe Essex Tech on December 14th. The girls will host Mystic Valley on December 17th before gearing up for the Salem, New Hampshire Holiday Tournament over the break. Wrestling opened up their season with a home quad meet on the 11th hosting Malton Catholic, Woburn, and Concord Carlisle with the Griffin Grapplers finishing 2-1 on the day. The team will host Ashland on December 15th and then get prepared for both the Wilmington Sons of Italy tournament, tournament as well as the prestigious Lowell Holidays at the Songus Arena in the coming weeks. The swim and dive team began their meet schedule on December 15th when they traveled to Lintec and will host Shawsheen on December 22nd. Indoor track began what they hope to be a pursuit of the league title when they faced off with Lowell Catholic on the 15th at the Lynn Tech Fieldhouse. The Griffin cheerleaders had a large number of talented athletes try out for the winter squad, and the Lady Griffins look poised to have a successful competition season this year. And the, the Neshoba Tech and Greater Lowell Co-op hockey team will open their season when they host Minuteman on December 16th at the Chelmsford Forum. This concludes the Student Activities Report. Very nice Thank job. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Have a great holiday. Yes. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Enjoy your holidays. Yep. On to approval of the minutes. May have a so motion moved. to approve the minutes. Wow. And a second. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. O'Hare. George. 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 Yes. Mr. LeMay. Yes. Mr. Sheehan. Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Tatsius? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Giggy? Yes. On to the report of the treasurer. Can I have a motion to waive the reading? So moved. And a second. second. And a roll call, please. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Tatsius? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Giggy. Yes. Can I have a motion to approve the expenditures of $4,138,579.30? A second? Second. Roll call. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Tatsis? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Giggy? Yes. I don't see Mr. McCarroll here, so I don't think we have anything from General Counsel. On to the Superintendent. I'd like to turn it over to Jill Davis. Thank you. Uh, the first item on my agenda, I'll be seeking approval for two separate donations. The first is a donation to the Automotive Technology Department of a 2001 BMW 530i from Mr. and Mrs. Greenland of Acton with an estimated value of $2,500. This vehicle will be used for the educational purposes until it is no longer viable. I'm uh, looking for a vote. Can I have a motion to accept the donation motion. of the 2001 BMW Second. 530i from Mr. and Mrs. Greenland? And we have a motion, a second. Roll call, please. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? 
Yes. Mr. Kitchen? Yes. Mr. Tatius? Yes. Mr. Mormon? Yes. Mr. Giggy? Yes. Okay, the second uh, item on my agenda is another donation to the Automotive Technology Department and is from Mr. Steve Lytle from Advanced Auto Parts of Drakeit. Mr. Lytle is currently our advisory chairperson and notified us that due to the closing of their Drakeit location and relocation to Lowell, they, they have a variety of tools and parts uh, in their store that they would like to donate. The estimated value of these items is over $3,000 and would be used for educational purposes to help with demonstrations and operation within the shop and related classes. And I'm looking for a vote as well. Can I have a motion to accept the donation of the tools and parts from Advanced Auto Parts? <laughs> Second. And a roll call. Mr. O'Hare? George? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Tatius? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Gigi? Yes. The next item on my agenda is the Cooperative Education Report, which is provided in your packages. Uh, the report you were provided indicates 149 senior students participating in our Cooperative Education Program uh, at the end of November. However, I'm happy to report that to date there are 160 senior students participating in co-op, which is approximately 33% of the class of 2022. Uh, I would also like to add that Mrs. Byzantin has been working extremely hard and has developed some new partnerships. We are now working with TARC in Billerica, a manufacturing company who has employed some of our engineering and electronics students. Lowell Community Health Center, interested in employing our medical students. Uh, also, uh, Suffolk Construction, which is part of the company which is working at Lowell High School, which is interested in employing some of our CAD students. And UMass Lowell Facilities, which is also interested in employing some of our CAD students. So I'd just like to thank uh, Mrs. Bazanson for her hard, her hard, hard work in expanding our cooperative uh, opportunities for our students. The next item on my agenda, I'd like to provide you an update with the general health and safety protocols. Uh, I was on a meeting with the uh, Commissioner of Education yesterday who indicated that due to the new COVID variant, the mass mandate may be extended beyond January 15th and the department will keep us updated in early January on that decision. The next item, any questions in regards to the health and safety update? <coughs> the next item on my report, I'd like to ask the Assistant Superintendent Principal, Mr. Barton, to join us to present the changes to the student <coughs> handbook, athletic handbook, and the bullying prevention and intervention plan. And each of these will require a, a vote. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Um, the, the, the beginning of this, this these changes to the student handbook are based on a six-year process of tiered focus monitoring from the Department of Ed. Um, currently, we're going through the third year, which is a sort of mid-cycle review, and it is focuses on civil rights and special education policies. Um, before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge um, Allison Rahani, Director of Special Ed, and Tracy Anconarcio, Director of School Counseling, who did much of the work for this in research and communication with the Department of Ed. Um, so I'll like to walk you through all of these changes in the student handbook. Um, all of these are additions and these are recommendations from the Department of Ed in terms of our policy in regard to civil rights and special education. Um, the first one, on number four, is really an update to the school's philosophy to include uh, limited English proficient students as well as other protected groups. Um, you'll see that the Department of Ed recommended that we include limited English proficient, proficient students as a protected category uh, for students to be not be discriminated against. Um, so that's four and five and it includes into page six, uh, number six with sexual orientation and limited English proficiency. So it's really an addition of a protected group in our school community. 
Um, going on to the next page in terms of seven, um, and page eight focuses on disciplinary measures. Um, if you look at the eighth category, it really focuses on making sure that whatever discipline is administered by the assistant superintendent principal or the designee of the superintendent follows the uh, federal and state laws in terms of students with disabilities. And the other important thing to note here is <clears throat> if a student or staff knowingly makes a false allegation of bullying or, ret or retaliation associated with bullying, and it turns out to be false, though that staff or student can be held to a um, long-term exclusion or termination for their conduct. So that's something that's added there. Um, under nine is the restraint of students. So again, uh, actually in this instance, um, really what it is saying is it's making sure that nowhere in a student's IEP or any document uh, restraint can be um, put in the language. It can be a condition of a student's behavior plan. Um, it really protects a student from having a restraint um, identified as a requirement for their IEP or anything associated with their behavior um, within the school district. Um, under number 10 um, is it something that you'll see in red where it says, where possible, safe and supportive and non-exclusionary remedies and processes should be attempted before students are removed from class at all. Um, what the Department of Ed is looking for is prior to the principal um, or assistant principal suspending a student or expelling a student or providing a student in-house, they're looking for you to consider alternative measures such as restorative justice or um, some other means of a student understanding the consequences of their behavior. Um, it could be work around the building, it could be some mediation, it could be conferencing, it could be a variety of other factors. And just to stress, that's where possible. So um, it's really the decision of the principal and the decision of the assistant principals uh, to determine whether or not that is a feasible um, alternative to suspending a student. So the goal in this instance, or the recommendation from the Department of Ed is to, uh, before we suspend someone, to look if possible, are there other methods or means before suspending someone. Um, <clears throat> the other aspect in 12 you'll see is uh, an appeal of a long-term suspension. Um, currently, when the principal administers a long-term suspension, which is more than 10 days, um, Parents have the right to appeal that within a certain time frame. Um, it gives the superintendent latitude in terms of whether or not they would grant or not grant a, an appeal if the parents don't follow the timeline. So it, it's language in the, in the conduct. So if they choose to uh, or they miss the deadline for following an appeal, the superintendent has the uh, decision making of whether to grant it or not grant it. So that's language again that's recommended by the Department of Ed to put, put in there. Um, the large bulk of this under 13, I know I'm giving you a lot of information here. Um, the large part of, paid, of section 13 is students with disabilities. So um, if a student uh, has a disability and they're subject to disciplinary code, there's a process to do what's known as a manifestation determination or manifestation hearing. And that's where um, the teachers and uh, instructors that are closest to the student meet to determine whether or not their infraction or what they have allegedly done is related or not related to their disability. One of the big parts that the Department of Ed has asked us to include is if we have knowledge that a student might have a disability, for example, if they haven't had an IEP yet or they don't have a 504, or a parent has said, for example, just giving you an example, um, my student will be evaluated for a disability, or I've always thought my student has a disability, and then it is incumbent upon the school district to take action and measures and treat that student as if they did have a disability to go through the process so that their, um, their rights are being met. So that's a uh, significant part of this section. 
to be included. So essentially, even if we have any knowledge or suspicion that there's a disability, even if a teacher were to say, I'd like an evaluation on this student, prior to uh, the principal administering a consequence, we have to follow a series of steps to ensure that their rights are being met. Um, in addition, there's information in here about um, if there is, because of emotional or behavioral reason that a student might need an alternative or interim alternative setting, there's um, language in here if they uh, cannot be suspended for more than 45 days, um, they would have to have a FBA, which is a behavioral assessment administered, as well as a manifestation meeting. and. Um, there's rules and restrictions regarding how that's administrated and how that's communicated with the families. So the bulk of it is really associated with um, disciplining students with IEPs or 504s and ensuring that uh, we're following the state and local regulations prior to delivering a consequence for them. Um, <clears throat> Lastly, uh, the appendix includes the protected categories that I described before, um, and there's just some updating in terms of um, the assistant principal's telephone number here. I know that's a lot. Um, as you can see, that they did they worked on this, uh, Ms. Encarnacio and Ms. Rahani, uh, for considerable months with the Department of Ed in consultation with them to prepare these changes to this handbook. So thank you. Any so questions? Any discussion regarding that? Uh, under number nine. Who initiates authority or? Uh, does permission have to be granted? So there are people within the school district who have been trained for restraints. Okay. And if restraints is longer than 20 minutes, they have to have the permission of the assistant superintendent and principal for that to be longer. At what point, if any, are the school resource officers involved? Um, initially, it's typically the respondents of the main office and the hall monitors and any other teachers that are yeah. um, designated as the restraints. Further assistance is needed. If further assistance is needed and it becomes a it becomes a student where there's an a, something of greater significance, then the school resource officers may play a role in that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job. A lot of work went into it. Are these um, changes something that Jesse came up with? Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Do we have a say? Um, yes, we do, actually. Um, and I think Ms. Ankenarsi and Ms. Rahani may be better suited to say that, but in some of these instances, they were recommendations to be included now because we were, in, we were told that the likelihood is they will be required in the near future. So the suggestion was to include it now. For example, the protected category of limited English proficient students. Um, it's not a requirement at this stage, but the recommendation from the Department of Ed is in the near future that that will be a requirement as a protected <coughs> category. Probably to our advantage, too, if we don't move forward mm -hmm. now. Right? I think so, yep. And the other, the other factor to that, um, Mr. Tassius, is um, this is a monitoring review. So in January, this Department of Ed will 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 review this policy, these policies, and a number of documents associated with um, civil rights and special education. And based on those documents, they'll come up with a ranking. And that will be um, a ranking that will um, identify where the school falls in terms of adherence to their policies and procedures. Um, so it is to our advantage to include them and what we ahead of time. Are found not to adhere to, we would have to respond in what they call corrective action. Correct. So that would be the downside of us Correct. not accepting it. Exactly. Is there any other downside? Well, oh, the downside is we want to have policies that are hmm. fair, and equal, and fair for, and equal for Current. everyone. So yeah, yeah. I, I don't think there is a downside. I might have one. That's a good question, though. 
kind of one more question. Um, at what point, if any, would uh, say if there was a a school nurse required, they're just called upon, but the, is there training all involved for these people? Yes. So if, if for example, there was a restraint or a fight or something that's that's mm -hmm. required, so violent in nature, the school the students are always brought to the school nurse to be examined and checked out. Oh, always. That's a matter of policy that we follow. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Can I have a motion to approve the revised 2021-2022 student handbook? Second. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. O'Hare. George. Yes. Yeah. Mr. LeMay. Yes. Mr. Sheehan. Yes. Mr. Gitchia. Yes. Mr. Tatsius. Yes. Mr. Moran. Yes. Mr. Gigi. Yes. Thank you. Um, the next change, I believe, on the agenda is the change to the bullying intervention plan, if I'm not mistaken. Um, these, um, again, the origins of this are, is through the review of the Department of Ed, through the work that Ms. Encarnacion and Ms. Rahani have been doing. Um, essentially, these are not as significant, um, rather not as um, descriptive, but the changes are really based on the protected categories that we described earlier. Um, sexual orientation, religious creed, pregnant or pregnancy status, and limited English proficiency. And that's, those are really the only changes to this particular document, just to include those protected categories that were recommended by the state. So I, I guess just to further elaborate, to have a consistent non-discrimination uh, notice of non-discrimination be consistent in all our documents. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Motion to approve the revised 2021-2022 Bullying Prevention and Intervention Plan. Uh, motion. Motion. Second. Second. And then a roll call. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Tatsias? Yes. Mr. Marvin? Yes. Mr. Gigi? Yes. Okay. The athletic handbook. Yes, please. Uh, the same is true for the athletic handbook. The categories are included as the superintendent described just to be consistent among all of our policy documents. All right, can I have a motion to approve the revised 2021-2022 athletic handbook? Motion. Second? Second. And then a roll call. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Tatis. Yes. Mr. Moran? Yes. Mr. Gigi? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Borton, Mrs. Mahoney, and yep. Encarnacio. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Nice work. A lot of work went into that, I'm sure. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Uh, lastly, I would like to ask. Oh, do we did we get an approval for that? I'm sorry. We did. We did. Okay. Yep. So lastly, I would like to ask uh, Lisa Martinez to join us, the Director of Technology Enrollment and Information, to review all uh, the changes to the Greater Old Technical High School admissions policy. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And I'll be seeking mm -hmm. approval. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm here to, uh, to talk about the changes um, from the approved admissions uh, policy for the new proposed admissions policy. And the overall format, including um, the headings, the language, uh, has uh, changed and been added to reflect the DESI model policy template. From the new Chapter 74 CVTE Equitable Student Access Guidelines. Much of our current admission policy uh, content and language is now merged into this policy. So using their, their model template, we moved, moved much of our document in, into this. But what I'd like to do is just go through some of the changes and additions. And what I did was I sort of, um, I have the document here, I have the, uh, the headings as well as um, some of the changes. So please stop me after each one and I'd be happy to um, 
to go into greater detail if, if you um, have any questions. Thank you. So on page one uh, of our mission policy, uh, the title introduction has changed from, uh, from introduction just to admissions introduction. And our added, uh, we added model Massachusetts state regulations requirements from the template and the link from, uh, we, we, we actually put in the link for the Massachusetts state regulations and added our intention to comply and uh, more specific, and they added more specific language on why the selection criteria are needed. So that was in section one. Uh, in section two, anybody have any, have any questions on, on section one? Is that come out at Mass General Laws book? Yes, yeah, okay. so CO3, uh, 603 CMR uh, 4.0. Uh, for Section 2, there is no change to the title, Equal Educational Opportunity. Uh, and um, in, in A, uh, for, for we added more specific, inclusive language to meet DESE specifications consistent with mass regulations. And again, we added the link to the regulations including Greater Lowell Tech and the School Committee's commitment to supporting district and community efforts to ensure ex, uh, students experiencing homelessness and in foster care and military children have access to high quality, stable educational practices. That's on pages one and two. We also, a link in contact information to the GL Tech's McKinney-Vento Homeless Liaison, Foster Care, Military Liaison was added, so we just added that contact information. We also added additional language from the model template to reflect the Chapter 74 CVTE Equitable Student Access Guidelines requirement, the new requirement, CVT E school programs must ensure that all admissions materials are in both English and the primary language of the home if such primary language is other than English. So that was a requirement, so we made sure that we put that into the, um, the new policy. We also added additional language from the model template that GLTech has a plan to meet the Chapter 74 CVTE Equitable Student Access Guidelines requirement, a plan that includes deliberate specific strategies to promote equal educational opportunities and attract and enroll and retain a student's population that when compared to students in similar grades and sending districts has a comparable ac academic and demographic profile. So um, that's added in our new uh, recruitment policies that you'll see later on in, in the, this document. So for section two, does anybody have any, any questions? Okay, uh, for section three, um, there is not a change to the title, which is eligibility. And that's again on, on page two. <clears throat> We added additional language, again, from the model template to reflect the Chapter 74 CVTE Equitable Students Access Guidelines requirements. Admit resident students who meet the minimum requirements for admission prior to accepting non-resident students seeking the same program and condition admission on a, on a student having been promoted um, to the grade that they have been admitted to enter. So um, not much has changed with that, but we just made it more explicit. We added additional detailed language from the model template regarding the, the inter-district school choice program, including a link to inter-district school choice program, MGLC 76, section 12B. So we added the link to that as well. And uh, use model language. Added more explicit language regarding transfer students and added the conditional language on page three. Then we added additional language, again from the model template and DESE regulations for the McKinney uh, Vento before it was um, not put in detail, although we did have it. So now we've added the model language uh, from the template. Also added additional language from model template and DESE regulations for foster care students and military students. Anybody have any questions on section three? For section four, there is no change to the title organizational structure. We added detailed additional language from the model template, including contact information links for the superintendent director, the assistant superintendent principal, and the director of technology enrollment and information. 
We also added additional staff members to admissions committee to include the ELE director and the director of special education to meet the Chapter 74 CVT Equitable Student Access Guidelines requirement, a plan that includes deliberate, specific strategies to promote equal educational opportunities and attract, enroll, and retain a student population that, when compared to students in similar grades in sending districts, has a comparable academic and dem dem demographic profile. We also added the additional language, review of the missions data from current and previous school years and all relative, rel relevant data regarding our sending communities to ensure equitable access pursuant to 603 CMR 4.00 and all applica applicable state and federal regulations to reflect the Chapter 74 CVTE Equitable Student Access Guidelines requirement, a plan that has that includes deliberate specific strategies to promote equal educational opportunities and track, enroll, and retain a student population that when compared to students in similar grades in sending districts has a comparable academic and demographic profile. So we added, um, again, the ELE director and the director of special education um, so that we could um, review that data together um, as uh, during, um, during uh, multiple uh, different times during the school year. Let me ask a question. Sure. Have we been doing, we've been doing this all along, right? Um, it's just stuff we have to add because Desi's driving us? Yes. Okay, that's what Yes, it's, it's okay. more... Um, but we, they I think, is a difference in the organizational structure that um, what's new um, is that we've added the ELE director in special education is so, so that it would be more of a collaborative effort and be able to um, ensure that we're meeting that. Okay. It's just that it seems it's just, we've, I know we've been doing this all along, targeting mm -hmm. and looking. So every time you come up, I know you have everything in place. So I'm just... Mm -hmm. It's okay. being just spelling it out in, yeah. in the admission and, and also, you know, tailoring it to the model template. Right. Um, title recruitment process is changed to admissions communication policies. Okay, on page five. Okay. This is some of the new, new requirements as well. More detailed and explicit language, including language from the model template, has been added to reflect the Chapter 74 CVTE Equitable Student Access Guidelines requirements. CVTE schools programs must annually publish their mission policy in their program of studies, post a copy on the school website, and provide a copy uh, to each student applicant and their parent guardian. This is a little bit different. We used to just have it on our website. Now, as a um, when the uh, app when uh, when a student applies to the school, they will be sent the admissions policy. And we will do that in their, their home language if requested. Links to the GLTHS website providing information on the admissions process, a link to our admissions policy, including the inclusion of the admission policy in the program of studies, online application, as well as other information about programs has been added. Before, we just had it uh, on our website. Now we're making it very clear how to get there and, and uh, also offering help if they need to be able to, um, to, um, to access that information. Links to, a different, uh, to informational materials and admissions materials in the students' families' home languages have been added. Again, we now have the links in, and so they can just click on it and it goes right to that information. Language about uh, core transportation has been added. Um, we've provided uh, school um, uh, transportation. If a sending school um, has a field trip here, we've provided that. We just made that explicit in, in this policy. Added additional language from the model template to reflect the Chapter 74 CVTE Equitable Student Access Guidelines requirements. Sending districts must count middle school student tours of CVTE school programs during the school day as unexcused <coughs> absences. As, as excused absences, actually. Did we send that to Drake? Yes, we, okay. we did. And so um, they... They, everybody has been um, informed of the new regulations. Okay. Is it excused or unexcused? So we're it's going excused. to have to change it. It's going to it's have excused. to be changed to excused. Mm -hmm. 
to have that will have to be changed to I have it as unexcused absences. That's a typo. It should be excused. That will be changed. Because it's a big difference. <laughs> it is a big difference. <laughs> Where is that? That should be excused. Excused absences. Five last line of five times. Where is that, Lisa? Sure, that's E. E? Yes. Oh, on the bottom. Last line. That yep. will be changed to excused. Or sending schools must not. It will be, one of them will be changed. So it's a typo. Okay, any other so questions about that? You are you are saying it right. Such tours may not be counted as unexcused right. absence. So you're saying may not be counted right. as an unexcused absence. Right. So that is correct. Sending, it I have it as sending schools must. So, it, um, so I either have to change it to sending schools must not, or I need to change excused absences. Yes. Yeah. Any any questions about section five? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Section six. There is no change to the title application process, but we've made some some changes here. We added the eleventh and twelfth grade for applicable transfer students including more explicit language about district resident preference. So students who are transferring from another technical vocational high school, um, if they're in the same course of study, they can uh, apply to our school if they move into the district. So that's why we added the 11th and, and 12th grade. If we, again, that's And they if, must enter the shop that they left the other school for. Right. And that's if there is, there's, so a, a, there's a seat. No. No further transfer process. Added more explicit language on applying to GL, GL Tech on page six. Added links to online admission page and application in students' home languages. We also changed the dates to reflect the current deadlines, uh, application deadlines. And then in the late application section, language regarding resident student preference and explicit ranking process is added. I was always um, a little, um, we wanted to make it much more explicit in the ranking process. Any questions in section six? Section, section seven, the title selection criteria has changed the selection process. Okay, specific detailed language, including language from the model template was added. And that's on page nine. Okay. Significant change here in section B. Criteria changed to meet the Chapter 74 CVTE Equitable Student Access Guidelines requirement that CVTE schools programs cannot consider any student conduct other than infractions that resulted in suspensions and or expulsions pursuant to MGL uh, C 71, section 37H, 37H and a half, and 37H and three quarters. This is a significant change to our admissions policy. So in essence, the only way is if they're suspended, that, that could be used against them. Other than that, all minor infractions in that are not even looked at. Uh, no, it, it's a little bit more specific a, than that. It's suspensions longer than 10, 10 days, days or a cumulative of 10 days. So they can have three, three, and three, and one. So yes, it could be three, three, and, and one, then we would be able to consider it. And then um, that would be the, the minor infraction, uh, I'm sorry, that would be the handbook infractions for 37H and three quarters. So but they must be cumulative up to 10. Up to 10 days, so if it's 3, 3, and 1, we can't. Right. It, it's it right. up to 10 days, so we. So it would be. It's so not this, is, this is absolutely Desi putting this in. Yes. I just have a huge problem with this because if. You could it, have a disciplinary. It, well, child. yeah, well, I represent Lowell, so Lowell, I mean, and I'm sure I'll take heat for this, but. Low could discipline different from greater low. That doesn't mean if we have a zero tolerance for vaping here. Low can vape, the kid gets caught, and okay, we suspend him for a day. We're here, it could be three days. So it's not uniform across the board. And you know what I mean? And I just, I just have a problem with this because if it doesn't add up to 10 days, he could be suspended four times for two days. Is there yes. that much inconsistency amongst the school? Well, it depends well, on what school you go to. Well, and it depends on who the the principal is and how they want to discipline. Yes, there is inconsistency. There is and I just have a huge problem There's with this. There's a subjective component, though. Right, yes, so is. I just have a problem with this because now the, 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 the student comes in here, 
and he could be he could be you know suspended four times or he could be suspended nine times for one day. There's ways around it now. Yeah. And I, you know I just have a huge problem with it. I don't think Desi's taking it over. Uh, again, I'm not the biggest fan of Desi, so they're, they're they're driving this and we have to go along with it. So there's really not much more I can say about it. I just I don't like this piece of the whole thing after I read it. But that's just my take on it. I know it's not you, Lisa. I just don't like this mm -hmm. take because we get a kid suspended nine times for a day. So and you're right. comes in here right, and disrupts this is it. the new regulations. So I know. It's really, yeah. yeah, it's not. It's I just. We don't, don't have a lot. We, yeah, we don't have anything. That's it. We have no leeway about it. And that's that's my problem, I guess. So you're, you'd be looking for consistency. Yeah. Because, well, well uh, see, discipline can be subjective. Yeah. I mean, Curtis, think about this. If a kid gets suspended four times in a school year and they suspend them for two days each, that's eight. Well, the difference I see is a technical school versus high school. Yeah. Uh, it probably needs to be a little more st stringency involved based on getting students here. We don't have a problem getting students here. We all know there's a waiting list. Sure. Um, I, I, I don't know where... The fairness. I can see where you're coming from, but I'm just well, trying to compare high school versus I, I, technical. I, no, I, I get it. I guess my well, problem is if we we get a suspension problem in here because he's under 10 days and he gets suspended here three times, well, that shop I was taken away. Say he's an electrical, he doesn't get his hours. He's sitting in in house or wherever he's in. And that's just not, I mean, it is what it is. Desi's driving it and. I probably should have shut my mouth. I just didn't like. No, thing. you. I, I, I don't yeah, I'm not looking for a prolonged say. conversation. I, did, would you want to say something to that? Effect? Well, I think no. these are the pre-students, the ones that are coming into Greater Lowell applying. Yeah. And what you have is you have maybe subjective discipline through their undergrad uh, grade school that's not uniformly applied, which is fine because then you're you're letting everybody come in except if they're a chronic serious problem. How many kids do you really see have 10 days of suspension from the 6th to the 8th grade? Not too many. So you're really not closing out a lot here, I don't think. Maybe the real difficult problem. But to Lee's point, it's subjective. Yeah. Depends on the school that they're coming from. How they disappoint. Cool. Which I would think would be uniform because Desi's involved. It should be the same policies throughout all the schools and the same protocols and guidelines. But I do see that you could say, hey, this kid, you know, he, this is a minor infraction, gets one day. And another school might say that's more major. I would say. And the vaping's a, a, a good example. It, it, it's probably just the same thing when you apply for colleges. I'll bet you different colleges are different too. Well, they want money. <laughs> well, I understand what they want. <laughs> and great. We have, we hire some very good people here. Yeah. And I think this is just ties their hands sometimes. Yeah. You know, I think we should have. Well, you could have the other example. You could have a very disciplinary problem through the sixth and eighth grade. He's got. 10 days suspension, he doesn't even get a shot to go to a tech school. That's really not fair. There's, you know, we have qualified people that can look at that maybe a little bit further and say, you know what, this kid deserves a break. Let's see how he does. Academically, he's, he's well qualified. He has a discipline problem, and he just needs the right mentors. They're eliminating that student from the opportunity to come here. And I find that a little bit more offensive than the other way. Yeah. And I think we have people here that do mentor. mentor we got a great team here. Act, that have the concern of the students. That's their main concern. And uh, if you have a kid that really doesn't belong here, then they shouldn't be here. And I think it, it takes. You know, I don't know. It's just—it's sad when you get these kind of guidelines. You don't have the flexibility anymore. That's what I'm saying. When we have the people that have that capability, is there any way that we can work with that? Um, no. No. So, so this is a moot discussion. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once I looked at it, I was like, "Okay, with Jan's Yeah, it's sad. Guilty. Okay.
Moving on. Okay, on on C, because of the new regulations, uh, the total points changed from 130 to 100 100 point system. Okay, so it went from 130 to 100 points. And the overall weighting for categories changed. So the scholastic achievement and attendance criteria increased in weighting, and the discipline conduct and school council recommendation criteria decreased in weighting. So, so, um, so because of the the regulation, the the conduct uh, discipline weighting down to went from forty percent to twenty percent. Okay, and um, and we increased the weighting. Um, uh, to meet that uh, for um, for the academic achievement and attendance, we also decreased um, the the, um, the guidance recommendation from ten points to five points, taking out some of the subjectivity. And does anybody have any questions about the weighting or Wait, the? Can you say that again? Sure. So because of the new uh, discipline requirement, we we wanted to um, we decreased the the. Um, Value yeah, the, the weighting for discipline conduct and took that uh, weighting and moved it to the, um, the scholastic achievement and attendance. And we also decreased the, um, the, um, the guidance recommendation from 10 points to 5 points to, to be able to um, take out some of the subjectivity of, of that. So, so um, with these new regulations, the weighting of discipline, um, in order to meet these regulations, we, we decrease the weighting so that the students have the opportunity to, to, to enter grade level technical high school. So students who maybe would have had one or two suspensions or three suspensions will now get maximum points. And the students who, ha who have one of these infractions which would be ten or uh, ten or more, or uh, an infraction of an expulsion, it's or main, they they get zero points. Yeah. So that that allows for ninety nine percent of the students not to really have a discipline Any infraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So increases their chances of, of getting it to greater level. Awesome. We had explicit language and links to the regulations regarding suspension and expulsion were added to the discipline conduct section. And explicit language on ranking, ranking and waitlisting resident and non-resident students was added. And we made it explicit that the students that are non-resident um, go uh, uh, to the to the end of the waiting mm -hmm. list, where the, the students that are in district have, priority. have priority. There is no change to the type. Oh, any questions? Uh, about section seven. I know this is a significant change, so any questions you have, I'm more than happy to answer. There's not much we can say. No. <laughs> to be honest with you. Section eight, there is no change to the title enrollment. Again, specific language is added regarding conditioned acceptance and enrollment at Greater Lowell Technical High School on the accuracy and completeness of the student's application. Language is added that GLTHS has the right to revoke conditional acceptance if it is determined that the student's parents slash guardians or student sending school district provided inaccurate, incomplete, and misleading information during the application process. Because uh, of the many changes um, with, um, with the um, selection process and criteria, we added that, um, that, that piece for the protection for Greater Little Technical High School. So does the vetting take place when the application comes in or after the student is given his acceptance and then do you vet the application afterwards? Sure. So what would happen is the schools provide us with the information that we are requesting. We're, we request um, records for attendance, um, academic uh, you know, report cards, as well as the discipline record. Um, so we request that as well as the guidance recommendation. And then once they give that to us, and then they send the records after the student has been accepted, and we check to make sure that there's not a discrepancy. Is, how often is there a discrepancy, um, if you know? Not, it can't be too bad. No, bad. not very often. Not very often. Um, there are some discrepancies, uh, certainly with uh, attendance and, and different, you know, um, that maybe they didn't include. And then they're sending the whole entire record. So there, there, are, there are additions once we, we get the actual school record. Um, 
when they when the student has been accepted and registered they then send their whole cumulative folder over to us and that in, that includes much more information than what they're giving us here could we could we run into a problem with the attendance with because last year was mostly online learning with kids not being able to get online having that problem would that have to be excused from, from the school from their be, yeah. from their school okay from their school because I know, just saying, we probably just know because what I do for work, there were some kids without internet and right. have a hard mm -hmm. time getting there. Well, hard that would be up to, their school up to their district. school. Up to their school. Yeah. Okay. school. Okay. Okay. Okay, we also added the immunization expectations were added um, that are required for the student to register. And then to meet the new Chapter 74 CVTE Equitable Student Access Guideline requirement, the requirements for students to pass English, Language Arts, and Mathematics for the school year, immediately preceding their enrollment at GLTHS was removed. We used to have that um, as, a, as, a, um, as, a requirement. Yeah, as a requirement to be able to, for acceptance, and um, that has been removed, which is a new guide, uh, regulation from Jesse. Any questions in Section 8? Okay, Section 9, the title Technical Program Placement is changed to Exploratory Program. That's on page 12. We added DESE template language regarding the technical program placement. We changed the rubric uh, to reflect the new rubric that has been in place since 2017. So that's been in place, just had never been updated, so we just added that. Any questions about the technical program placement? That really hasn't changed. No? All right. Section 10. The title Review and Appeals has changed to Review and Appeals Process. We added additional detail language from the model template, including contact links to the superintendent director and the assistant superintendent principal, so that easier to be able to um, email them directly. Add explicit language, including language from the model template to meet the Chapter 74 CVTE Equitable Student Access Guidelines requirement. The superintendent or their designee shall maintain documentation as to the specific admission requirements that we use to deny admission and shall provide such documentation to the department or the prospective student parent guardian upon request. We added the language. We always did that anyway. Mm -hmm. So that was just more explicit in detail and giving contact information. We also added a new heading title, Maintenance of Records and Language from Model Template to meet the Chapter 74 CVT Equitable Student Access Guidelines requirements. CVTE schools programs must maintain a record of all students who apply for admission, enroll in school, or placed on a wait list, and their score on admissions criteria if used and provide such information to the department upon request. Again, we added the language. We always, we always had that information. And it's always been a very transparent process and has been provided upon request. Um, since this was printed out, we have just added a little bit more uh, explicit language on page three. On page three, where it's, we talk about non-resident students at the top, it's the very top in the second paragraph. We talk about non-student resident, residents from other vocational uh, technical schools and their eligibility. We're just g giving the um, the code. We're going to add that where it says policy. We're going to add the 603 CMR section 4.03, um, parentheses 6, parentheses B. We're That's going to add all of that information. And that information speaks about non-resident students shall submit an application of admission to the re receiving school no later than March 15th. So it gives the timeline of the preceding school year and shall be subject to the admission criteria of the receiving school. A non-resident student must submit the Chapter 74 Vocational Technical Education Program non-resident student uh, tuition application to the direct uh, to the district of residence no later than April 1 of the preceding school year. If a student moves to a non-resident district after April 1, the student shall submit a new Chapter 74 Vocational Technical Educational Program non-resident student tuition application to the district of, of residence as soon as practicable. So we just added that piece. 
That's uh, that's what that's, that's new. Be. That's new. I it since this has been printed. It just came down. Yep. So we're just going to add that link mm -hmm. as well, so that the students it's available to them, just to be a little bit more specific. And then on page five, what we're going to add, just very basic. Mm -hmm. is in the last um, section, Greater Old Tech High School also shares recruitment information in several languages. It talks about the tours. We're going, to, we're going to add a link that says to request a tour, please call or email the admissions office at, our, at 978, uh, our phone number, as well as the link to that. So and that they, we, we have done that. And we, and we, 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 we gave a tour yes. today. Yep, we gave a tour today. So <laughs> most of the changes are warranted and good. But if you wanted to give a message to Desi, I suppose we could vote as a board and say, we don't approve it. Yeah. And then if all the schools go and do that, then they can reevaluate. Yeah. I don't but I don't think that's beneficial, to be uh, honest with you. I don't think that's beneficial. I think it, our, our attorney has approved it. Okay. Uh, that We have our legal counsel look at it, and they have approved it. I think uh, as a school community, we have always been transparent with our admissions policy and fair to to all students uh, that, that come here. And we're going to continue continue to do that. I think we just had to uh, put it more in writing than, uh, well, yeah, than the processes that... Well, I know the admissions and, policy and have done a great job. Just for the record, we, we were not a school that was noted as... Uh, having discrepancies in their policy when letters uh, were sent out uh, a year or two ago by the Department of Education. Our demographics reflect the demographics of our sending communities. So we will continue to be fair in, in what we do here for our students. Well, I think the admission department does a great job. I think mm -hmm. this is just house cleaning and Desi decided to toss in the 10 day suspension. Mm -hmm. right. Just basically yeah. housekeeping for us yeah. saying, hey, that's what we do. And I think it opens the door wider for most of the students. Well, I think it, it shows that, you right. know, everyone has a chance. Everyone should be given a, a fair opportunity. And I think you're right yeah. on that. And that's what Desi wanted. And we mostly work with our sending schools um, mm -hmm. to look for discrepancies and no, I, I, no. I think we, we always think we did that. Yeah. Yeah. No, like I said, I know your yeah. department does a great job. Yeah. I mean, thank you. You guys have been transparent from the get go. Right. I asked mm -hmm. the other day they just made it more right? defined. Right. So it's it's very yeah. transparent. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Right. Can I have a motion to approve the revised admission policy? So moved. Second. And then can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Ovier? Judge? Judge? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Tatsius? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Giggy? Yes. On to the report of the business manager. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Lisa. Happy holidays. Happy, Happy holidays. Thank you, Lisa. Is that where you were? Oh, yeah. All right. Our first <laughs> item tonight is the seeking of a vote to declare a 1996 Ford F-250 plow truck that we used to use on campus as surplus. The truck uh, was replaced, I believe, two years ago now, so it hasn't really been used in the last two years and is in pretty rough condition. It's... Uh, based on a quick once over from our uh, team, they determined it would probably need brake lines, brake work, transmission lines, fuel tank, fuel lines, and system repairs to make it usable again. Um, so it's likely that this probably is junkyard bound, but we will follow the policy and ask our uh, community member or our sending communities if they're interested and um, then go about a bid process if we are to go. Uh, the way of junkyard or disposal otherwise. Is this something we bought brand new? Uh, I believe we did in in the 90s. So its life is... It got, yeah, they got 18 years. Cool. Is it years out of it? Just <laughs> some auto mechanics doesn't want to use for parts just to fix around, beat around yeah. No. Um, I, I don't no. know if they got no. a crack at it first. Can we can we ask them. That? Yeah, we can ask them first before we um, go about actually moving beyond that. Um, so I would just change the wording of this to declare the vehicle surplus, offer it to the automotive program for use if they're um, able to, if for teaching, yeah. or whatever. Right. If, it, if it makes sense for them, and then uh, it, 
If not, then we could move to the disposal policy. Okay. It's up to you. I don't I don't hear either way. I don't know if they no, I, I'm around on it, leave them to fix the brake lines or yeah, I mean, it's, it's on it or not. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's definitely work that could be done. Um, I, I don't know that uh, the director of plant services consulted with automotive. I, 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 I would make the assumption that he probably did, but um, I'm, I'm happy to take that and make run down and make sure that they don't have a use for it educationally before we move to a further disposal, for sure. So I guess based on that discussion, can I have a motion to declare the 1996 Ford F-250 as surplus and discard with the caveat that we consult with automotive to see if there's any learning or ability to use it as parts before following the property disposal policy. Mm -hmm. Motion. The second? Paul. Didn't sign. Can I roll call? I didn't sign. Mr. O here. George. Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Tatsias? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Gigi? Yes. Uh, the second item on my agenda tonight is another surplus item. This is we have three medical beds in the health assisting program that are no longer functioning. The power functions don't work on them. They've ordered some repair parts and tried with the maintenance team to get them to work again successfully or unsuccessfully. Uh -huh. um, we've ordered a replacements for these beds, so we're gonna look to move to disposal once the new ones are here in the house. Any questions? Can I have a motion to declare the medical beds as surplus and discard following the property disposal policy? So moved. A second? Roll call, please. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Tatsias? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Gigi? Yes. That's all I have for the evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Good night. <laughs> Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Have a good holiday. Please go. Enjoy. Leave. They're going to end up going to him anyways. Is there any old business to discuss? Any new business? Any committee men motions? Report of any subcommittees? Executive session? Mm -hmm. Looks like we need to a motion to enter the executive session pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A. Section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may be have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body. And the chair so declares uh, regarding the administrators. Um, so I need a motion. Then I will need a second. And then I'll need a roll call. Mr. O'Hare? Yes. Yeah. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Gitchia? I abstain. Mr. Tatsias? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Gigi? Yes. And then if we decide. I don't think we're going to need a vote. No, we don't I don't think we're going to no. need a vote. No. So then after executive session, we can call it a day. So move so to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second? Second? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Mr. O'Hare? Thank you, Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? I you don't think it's going to go? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Mr. Gitchia? Okay. Yes. Mr. Tatsias? Yes. Mr. Warren? Yes. Mr. Gigi? Yes.